And a warm welcome to the Ladies Club. My name is Bailen Kirti. Thank you for joining us as we bring you another epic episode of the Leading Women's Sports Talk Show here in Mzanzi. Majime Kalapeng, Nike Nale Women's Swedi, and we're all about profiling and mingling with women who are champions in the beautiful yet challenging world of sports. You are obviously welcome to join the conversation on social media platforms. 77 Fela, hashtag Yarona Eling, the Ladies Club. Ke at Spot at SABC, at Bailen Kirtley, at Le Women's Swedi. Hape Otarfmanako, Facebook. 77 Hashtag the ladies, the ladies Club. So it's so easy. And we want you to get involved in our topic and what we're actually going to be focusing mm. our conversation on because today's topic is women who have torn down sports barriers and paved the way for future generations. And today we shine the spotlight on all women who are paving the way for future generations. Our mm. game changer today mm. is a woman that personally inspired you because Lebo actually Oi. was quite the hockey player yes. when she was growing up and there was one in my lady heydays. in particular <laughs> <laughs> there was one lady in particular that really inspired you but isn't it so important that we do actually have those women to pave the way for Absolutely. younger ladies also they need to know the kind of impression they had on us growing up looking up to them I mean she was absolutely phenomenal and the fact that we're having her in studio today favorite day of the week, definitely. <laughs> Marek Villain, how do we work a quote to her? Because every week we always have yeah. a quote to inspire the women that watch the show. And it goes by, the, it goes like this. If a woman can only succeed by emulating men, I think it is a great loss and not a success. The aim is not only for a woman to succeed, but to keep her womanhood and let her womanhood influence society. Can you quote here, Suzanne Brogger, Yeah, Suzanne Brogger is a writer, novelist, poet and journalist. In 1997, she published one of her her main works, the family saga Jarakatan. Here she shares riveting tales about her Jewish family who immigrated mm. from Poland to Denmark. And that book actually was translated into 20 different languages. But I love what she says there about, yes. you know, women, it's not men standard is not the standard for us to be reaching. Yes. The standard for us to be reaching is the best that we can be as women. And I don't know why is it that we always want to make ourselves like men to be better. So we must toughen up a little bit. We must be a little bit more manly. Why can't we just carry out and be beautiful and feminine and still be powerful? Absolutely. Get involved in the conversation. It's yeah. so easy. Hashtag the ladies club. Today on the show, we take a look back at the women in sports that inspired us, won titles and shattered stereotypes. Kiwaka Luntun Toko, who was the first black African female to represent South Africa. Kati Papadin Sarunas at the Olympic and was part of the hockey team. Bay Lembayako, Sydney Olympic Games, the Castle Mosa 2000. I'm super excited to be joining her and she's in studio. She's going to be chatting to us, giving us a little bit of a glimpse into her journey. Coming up after the break. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with the Ladies Club. Please join us on Facebook and on Twitter at Sport at SABC, at Lebo Sweeney, at Bail and Curtis. So easy. Hashtag the, the Ladies, Ladies Club. Club. Time now to introduce our game changer for today. She retired from the South African national uh, hockey team with 75 caps just before the Athens Olympics in 2004. And became a national hockey icon. None other than Luntun Tloko. <laughs> You Thank have you. broken down racial barriers. We looked up to you as the young hockey players of yesteryears. Welcome to the Ladies Club. Such an honor to have you in studio. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Tell us about your journey though. Why hockey? Wow, it's, um, it's quite random actually because I mean, I started playing hockey when I was in Standard 5. Now everyone knows how old I am because I don't talk <laughs> about grades. Um, and I didn't even know hockey before that. I never seen a hockey stick, never seen a hockey field. And um, I, I moved to a new school and hockey was one of the sports that you had to play during winter and yeah. I had to play. And I don't know, I guess, thank God for me, I had some talent <laughs> in it. And I just fell in love with it um, also because it's just it's something you do with your friends, you know, mm. it's just you having fun, you're not playing on your own. Mm. And it's just camaraderie that you build with your teammates, which I think probably attracted me to it the most. Mm. 
but I understand you were quite an athletic child to begin with. You were one of those people that uh, I wish I was. Anything you did, you succeeded <laughs> in, especially when it came to sport. Yeah, I mean, thank you. Thanks to my parents who've got good genes. I mean, my dad was a, a great soccer player, he was a good athlete. My mom was a great tennis player. So, so luckily for me, I inherited that. And yeah, I mean, every sport that I did at school, um, I, I excelled at. And, uh, and I just loved it. I enjoyed, I enjoyed being active and I still do to this day. And, um, and yeah, hockey was just one where I kind of, I guess, fell in more in love with than, than, the other, than the other sport. Fast forward to the time you got your first cap as a South African player, wearing the green and gold. And even more pressure was the fact that you were the first black South African to represent South Africa under a new democracy, so to speak, in mm -hmm. the country. How does that, how did that make you feel and the pressure that it came with? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough in the beginning because obviously, you know, at the time there's obviously talk about quota, more representation yeah. and whatever. So, so you're never really sure in the beginning, you mm. know, whether you're there because you actually are really talented enough or, or you're there because you're black, you know. So, so the pressure in the beginning is really to, to always make sure you're performing, to always make sure um, when people play, watch you playing, they're going, okay, she does deserve to be in the team. She's not there just because she's black, mm. you know. And, and also there's a pressure of um, the other people that you play with um, to also make sure that you, you maintain mm. the standard and level and even maybe try to be better to, to always prove that I'm here because mm. I deserve to be here. I'm not here just because of, of my skin color. Sure. Uh, what did it mean for you to have been the role model? Mm. Uh, Lebel played hockey. She yeah. looked up to you. Absolutely. She wanted to be like yeah. you yeah. when she was actually playing the game. So what did it mean to you to, to be a role model for so many young mm. South African girls? Yeah, I mean, it's a, I have to be honest, it's a role that, um, that I don't relish too much because for me, it's just been about doing something that I loved and enjoyed and being a role model um, has become kind of a byproduct of that. But, but I never really thought about it a lot when, while I was still playing. But when I hear it now, you know, later on in my years and, and I'm, I'm proud of the way that I, I conducted myself and have represented myself um, you know, in, in the sport because, because it means that people then were able to look up to me and, mm. and I was a role model that people could look, look up to. I mean, there's a lot of things that I could have done wrong, I suppose, and, and not being a good representation of young women and, and how they should be in, in women's sports, you know. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, when I look back now, I'm like, I'm proud of, of, of what I've achieved and, and that, you know, people have wanted to follow in my footsteps. Another role model that we, we absolutely have to talk about is our trailblazer for today. You know a lot about that is uh, Lindsay Wright, having represented South Africa mm -hmm. now into coaching and the experience she brought to the team. And your thoughts about her experience having played over 200 games for South Africa as well? Yeah, she uh, is one of those people who actually, this is often asked in, a, in pop quizzes, you know, the sports trivias, yeah. that uh, who's the one player player that captained uh, her national team in a certain sport and her brother captained in another yes, certain sport. Yes. Her brother actually was uh, yeah. captaining the uh, Zimbabwe cricket mm. team. Uh, so they are a quite a unique sibling duo and it seems to run in the family. Absolutely. Like you say, you've got very good genes yourself. But you know, Lindsay, you know uh, what she's done for the sport and what she continues to do mm. for the sport. Your thoughts on our trailblazer today? Yeah, she's incredible. I mean, Lindsay, um, I played with Lindsay uh, for a long time in the team. She was a great captain, um, an amazing leader and motivator, you know, in our team. And, and I'm super proud of, of what she's achieved. And, and I think she's still, you know, she's still going to achieve more. I, I wish that she'll come back and coach uh, our ladies team mm -hmm. maybe one day, because I, um, I think she definitely will have um, a, a massive role to play in in how we can achieve going forward. So, yeah, I think she's, I think she's an amazing person. Besides hockey, though, this is something that not a lot of people know. You're a former uh, national hockey player. Not only that, you also worked with FIFA. Incredible, spent six years in Switzerland, was part of the FIFA, the 2010 FIFA World Cup here in South Africa. How did you move the transition from hockey to the beautiful game? Yeah, I mean, luckily through sport, I've met, uh, I met some incredible people um, who gave me an opportunity. You know, I think sometimes you think like as a sports person, what can you do post a sports career? But, but I think some, luckily some companies and some individuals see, 
you know, that discipline and the mm. hard work, the integrity that comes with being an international sports people, that can be very easily translated into a work situation. So, mm. so I was given an opportunity at a sports marketing company. And then the people that I ended up working with there, one of them ended up being the marketing director at FIFA sure. during the World Cup when they opened an office here. And I phoned him up and I said, are you guys interviewing for positions in marketing? Um, I would love to come in and, and uh, come in for an interview. I didn't hear anything for them <laughs> for three months. And I thought, okay, well, I guess it's not happening. And then they phoned me up and I sat in an interview with a whole group of people from Zurich as well, which was a bit of a surprise to me because I was expecting just a one-on-one -on -one interview with, with the South African guy. Um, yeah, and I got the job. Mm. And I guess um, through those sporting traits of discipline and, and hard work, um, you know, that came through in my work at FIFA and I mean, I work with incredible people and when they close the office here in South Africa, they offered me a job in Zurich mm. and uh, I thought, why not? Wow. You spent, you spent six years there before coming back home yeah, uh, just yeah. a year ago. Uh, I mentioned this before we began filming that we actually came to your house. Uh, with our other women's sports program yeah. that was on SABC platforms, Women in Sport, and we came to your townhouse before you left many, many years ago. Tell us about the Lunto before and now returning from Zurich. Has it changed mm. you? How has it broadened your mind? Yeah, I mean, I, I was saying to, to Lebe earlier, I think, I mean, I, I, it's definitely an experience that I don't regret. I would, if anybody has an opportunity to work and live abroad, um, I definitely recommend it. It, it. it takes you out of a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, it challenges you in ways that you don't ever expect. And it teaches you to grow and to, to know who you are and what you want, you know? And, and that was my journey, you know, in Zurich, apart from it being obviously incredible working at FIFA and, mm. you know, being at these events and being behind the scenes, you know, at these events like the World Cup now and being you know, up close with the, with the superstars and stuff. I mean, that, that was incredible. But, but just as an individual, the learning experience and growing experience for that for me has been incredible. And I think um, by the time I decided to come back, I was, I think, at the end of that learning and growing journey and wanted to come back and, and see what I can do and give back um, here back home. So, yeah, it was incredible. What an incredible journey. I kind of wish I could live vicariously through some of the <laughs> pictures and the life that you spend in Switzerland. What makes her tick? What makes her smile? What keeps her motivated? Well, Rona at sport at SABC, at Bale and Kirtley, at Lebo Motswedi. Somebody sang hashtag the ladies club. Welcome back, you're watching The Ladies Club. Thanks for staying with us here on SABC2. Our game changer today is a former national hockey player, Lunte and Floco, now gaining a lot of experience when it comes to sports marketing, most of which has been done with the FIFA in Switzerland. But we have to speak about this. It couldn't have been easy considering everything that happened at FIFA during your time there. Mm. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I obviously arrived at FIFA just after the World Cup in South Africa. And I mean, everything was on a huge high. Um, you know, everyone was super excited about the president that brought uh, the World Cup to Africa. You know, you know, everyone loved him, especially in Africa. And then and then a couple of years later, it yeah. just unraveled and fell apart. And uh, to be honest, was one of the worst places to work for, for a period. You didn't really want to sure. say you worked at FIFA because everyone was like, oh, you know, like, you, you must have people. been implicated. Exactly. Mm. You're all corrupt and stuff. Which, yeah. And you were which from is, Africa. Another thing. Yeah. Which was really tough because, because the organization, you know, there's politics like in any organization, but there's, it's full of a lot of people like me who, who are just there to do the work. You know, they do the good work. They deliver these, these tournaments that you get to watch now on TV, like in Russia and stuff. And, and they unfortunately get painted with the same brush as what happens, mm. you know, on a political level. So... So yeah, it was it was pretty tough. Um, we had to deliver some events over this period as well. So, so for us, the work just had to continue. Um, we had to try and pretend that the politics wasn't there, but it was really tough. I mean, an example was we were in Canada for the Women's World Cup, mm -hmm. um, which you know 
you know, you all know Canadian women's football, I mean, it's bigger than men's football mm. there. And it was an amazing event that the Canadians put, put together. But the only thing that the journalists were talking about there was what was happening back in Zurich, you know, which was, which was sure. tough for, for the women working there, for the teams that mm. were there, you know, to, to, to compete in, in football, you know, and, and showcase mm. their talent. So it was, it was really tough. But, um, but yeah, also a, a huge learning. You know, you're not, you know, that's, that's just what happens. You've just got to remember what you're there to do and what you want to learn and, and just carry on doing the work. And, wow. Yeah. Now you're back. You've been back for a year, back to South Africa. And you also are not really away from the game because you've joined a hockey club. You play for Wanderers. Yes. How does it feel going back onto the hockey, hockey field? It's amazing. I, I mean, I just think I'm the happiest when I'm playing hockey. Yes, right. Completely. <laughs> I like, I mean, I didn't play for, for a while when I came back because I was trying to settle in and, you know, trying to balance moving back and mm. with my, my new job and everything. But then when I went back, it was just like, I don't know, I, I could just breathe again. You know, I just, I love playing hockey. I love being surrounded by other people. I love the team spirit. Um, you know, the, the, the ladies that I'm playing with now, are the, some of them are the same ladies I played with before I left to go to Zurich. Sure. So it's just, it's been a lovely, like, reconnecting, you know, with old friends. Mm. And I think that's what I love about the hockey community as well. It's, you know, from, from young age to old age, it's always, you know, you see the same faces and the same people. And it's just, it's a lovely family, you know, so, yeah. Would you like to get more involved with hockey, maybe to develop youngsters, maybe yeah. go into coaching? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure about coaching because I'm, I'm not sure I'm such a good coach. I'm, I'm a good armchair coach, I think. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I would definitely would love to see, to see more young black women playing hockey. Um, and the interesting thing for me is that there's, um, hockey uh, is one of the most played sport at school level. And then somehow when, when kids get to varsity level mm. and stop afterwards, um, they disappear, you know, they fall, they fall away. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, why, why that is, you know, because it's not, it's not that there isn't uh, a lot of young girls playing hockey. Mm. It's just that at some level, they, they decide to step away from, mm. from sport altogether, you know. So, like, I don't know, maybe people have different challenges and and different goals that they want to achieve. So, mm. so yeah, I mean, I'd love to, to you know, hockey is a complicated sport because of the equipment that's required, the surface that's required and stuff. So it's not, you know, bringing it into kind of like um, underdeveloped areas is quite, it's quite tricky. But I think there's a role maybe for us to play, um, I don't know, through the bottom of sport or whatever, you know, to just to build like multi-purpose facilities and communities. Um, so people can play soccer, can play, mm. you know, netball, can play hockey and just and just getting involved in sport because I I've seen what it's done in my life. Um, so so, yeah, I mean, I, I um, would be excited to see what it can do in other people's lives as well. Sure. And how do you think we can improve the state of hockey in the country, especially the fact that it's so sad when a national hockey player has to work and fund her own international trips to represent her own country. How do you think we can improve this versus the time when you were playing pro? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's very sad that we've kind of gone back to, mm. to those days because it happened before I started playing. And to see that we're back there again, because obviously of lack of, you know, sponsorship and funding, you know, key brands are only involved in soccer, rugby and cricket mm. in South Africa. And... I mean, hockey is not the only sport that suffers from that. You know, athletics is the same, swimming is the same, mm -hmm. all the so-called amateur sports. You know, um, yeah, we need, we need, uh, I don't know, we need somehow to, to get funding back in these sports. And I guess that's probably a result of why people are not playing hockey at a high level after yeah. university or school because, you know, no one's going to afford to pay for trips to go overseas. You have mm. to work now and stuff. So, if you could take one lesson from hockey that you would say has been the greatest life lesson, sports mm. lesson that you hold very dear to you, what would it be? Um, I think it would be work hard um, and, you know, learn to get along with, with different people who come from sure. different backgrounds and different experiences and get to know people before you, you know, you judge who they are because you don't know, you know, you don't know what where people come from, you know, what their background is. And, and if you can get to know people and understand them, 
and work together with them you can't you know you, you can't believe what you can achieve um, sure. with people together so what keeps Lundu motivated now that you, you're playing a little bit of hockey and you're in now corporate sports marketing what keeps you motivated to keep going on and giving back in whatever way you know how yeah i mean it's it's funny i'm going through a bit of a transition in my in my life right now and my my search right now is really like what what can i do where can i add value yeah. you know in what i'm doing um you know how can i give back and how can i make sure that i leave people and places in a better place mm. than than when they are when you know before before i got there so so i'm busy trying to develop what that what is the, what that's going to look like now and and how i move that forward but but yeah what motivates me is just to see to see people being better you know to see people developing to see people growing and to see them being their best selves in mm. in no matter what they're doing so it seems as you speak about your journey that you've always just grabbed an opportunity or you know you've you mentioned that you couldn't have imagined that life would turn out the way that it has and you know the opportunities that have been presented to you is that the key to just take your opportunities when when they arise and just be the best that you can yeah i mean i, I absolutely believe that um things don't happen randomly in your life um that there's a path you know that that's kind of laid out for you and the right things will come at the right time um and the wrong things will go away you know True. at the, at the right time so so yeah i mean i think every every stage of my life has been an opportunity or a door that's open that i never imagined would take me to another bigger door you know that would open so so yeah i mean my life has been incredible and i'm and i'm so grateful and i'm so blessed by the people that i've met um i'm grateful for my family who cuz i'm kind of like the only sports person in in my family and i've just kind of led a life that's just been so different um from the rest of my family but but they've supported me and been behind me like you know 200% which i wouldn't be where i am i think without them so yeah i really wish we had more time <laughs> because i want to delve into the family scenario but we don't i think we need to have a part 2 we certainly do yeah. i mean so so down to earth yeah. you know like everything that she says just makes yeah. absolute sense and a real role model without even mm. trying to be which is oh, something so fantastic lunta thank you for coming into the ladies club lounge today thank you guys it's you, been a pleasure and you mm. promised us a part 2 right i would definitely love to do a part 2 <laughs> <laughs> all right we are mutle that's all we have for you for today when amul nano larna la the ladies club har ko pata hape mo beke etlang thank you for spending time with us let's do it again next week wednesday and remember until then that greatness is earned and never given for myself and lebo and i entire team goodbye